Hello all, so if you remember in the last video, we kind of played around with these question numbers and question parts and just customized them and just got looking just how we wanted them to. Um, so actually where I've got that bit of code up here, and this is really good practice when you write code, um, always comment things because, you know, if you come back six months, a year later, you're like, "Ha, huh, I can't remember what I was doing there. Just having that quick comment just helps you to remember, oh, right, I understand what that was doing now. Yeah, I remember now. So the way to comment in LaTeX is with a percentage sign, okay? And I'm just gonna type myself a quick note. It doesn't matter what I put on this line because anything else that I put on this line after that percentage symbol, LaTeX will ignore, okay? So let's type uh, reformats question and parts, okay? So that works fine. Okay, fine. Let's have a look at see what we've got at the moment. So this is our question document. Now, I think we can do sort of something slightly interesting here. Now, for most people, or for some people at least, this will be fine, okay? If you just wanted to give students a list of questions and then they have to complete their answers on like a separate bit of paper in their book or something, this is fine, right? But what if I wanted to leave some space so that students could actually write on this document, right? I think that would be really cool. So uh, let's think about how we could do this. Let's just come down to our questions. Okay, so in between question one and question two, let's actually put some vertical space. So the command for vertical space is backslash, obviously, and then V space. And then I put my curly brackets, and then this is how much space I wanna leave. Now, I guess, okay, find the equation of the tangent. That's the first question. I can decide how much space I wanna leave. I think 100 millimeters will be fine. And obviously 100 millimeters, the nice thing about defining uh, space using millimeters and centimeters is that I can actually visualize a bit of paper in front of me and go, yeah, that's how much space they need. Right, that's about 100 millimeters, okay? Uh, now, one thing I always do when I'm sort of defining space in LaTeX is to put a star in between the command and the amount of space to leave. Reason being is because LaTeX got an inbuilt feature that basically tries to format the document more efficiently, okay? And it will do this automatically. And it particularly doesn't like, uh, so, by the way, that inbuilt feature, nine times out of 10, you won't even notice it's there. You'll end up with a document that looks really, really nice. Um, but the thing is, it doesn't really like lots of empty space, okay? It's kind of programmed to deliberately overcome that. So just by putting that star there, basically says to LaTeX, no, I'm sure I want 100 millimeters of space here, okay? So just make sure you put that there. Okay, let's anyway, recompile, let's see what we get. So you can see that there's 100 millimeters of space between question one and question two. That's where students can put their answers. In fact, I think I'm just gonna move this drop points down till underneath where I've got V space. Okay, so I'm gonna go drop points down here. And that way I'm gonna move the four marks down here. So basically there's lots of space for students to put their thought process and uh, you know all their method in here. Now, what else could I do here? Well, I guess what I could do is actually put a dotted line where students could put their final answer. And I think this would be really good for a marker, for example, um, because they've got all this space, students got all this space where they can put all their thoughts and method and things down on paper, but then there'll be a dotted line where they can put their final answer and say, right, this is where my final answer is, okay? So one way that I could do this is using something called the dot fill command. So if I just type backslash and dot fill like that, and I recompile, what this will do is put a dotted line which fills the width of the page, which you can see here. So a dotted line, and it fills the width of the page. But of course, I'm all about customizability here. I don't actually like that. I would like just a dotted line which just fills just perhaps that section of the page, just over here on the right-hand side, just above the marks, uh, just a dotted line, maybe even in gray, maybe a different color, um, that would just basically allow students to put their final answer down here. I don't necessarily want it to be the full width of the page. So let's see how I can do this. So I'll come up here to my preamble, and what I'm gonna do is give you this code. Now, I'm not necessarily uh, gonna go through what every single thing does. I'll just give you an overall or holistic view uh, of what this does. Um, basically, you don't need to understand it, okay? If you just put this code in, it will work, right? Um, but let's kind of try and break it down just a little bit. So let's actually get rid of that second command, because there are two different commands here. This is the first command. So this is the command which I've just used. It's dot fill, okay? And what I'm doing is creating a new definition out of that command, okay? So the def corresponds to a new definition. And I'm using dot fill. The number one just simply corresponds to the number of inputs which I'm expecting to be put in here, okay? So I'm expecting one input. If it was two inputs, I put number two, okay? So the number one just corresponds to the one input that I'm gonna put here, okay? And C leaders, H box, don't need to worry about that. 
And then you can see here that the number one again, again, the input number one uh, goes here as well. So the input number one goes in two places. Basically, a number is expected there and it goes in two places. Okay, fine. Uh, what about this then? What does this do? Um, well, this dot just simply tells LaTeX that I want a dotted line. If I wanted it to be a starred line, I'd put a star. If I wanted it a, just a straight line, I'd put an underline, for example, or I could put a dashed line or something. But I want a dotted line, so I'm gonna leave that as a dot. Okay, fine. Let's have a look and see what the second command does then. So here it is. Notice that I'm using new command now, instead of before I was using renew command. Reason being is because this is a brand new command which LaTeX has never seen before. When I was using renew command, it was using command which LaTeX already had and basically renewing it. Okay, so I'm using a new command because it's a brand new command and I've just called it dot line. Now, I've called it dot line because I think that seems appropriate, uh, or appropriate at least. Um, you can technically call it whatever you like as long as it's not a command which LaTeX already has kind of built in to its system. So um, I've gone with dot line, I think that's appropriate. Okay, two in, in brackets here, the straight brackets, the square brackets, basically tells LaTeX that it's expecting two inputs to be put in here. Okay, that's all that is. Now you notice here, this is the default inputs. This is one of the default inputs is 0.5 EM. This is actually a spacing. Now, you remember that I said there's different ways of defining spacing in LaTeX. I tend to do it in terms of millimeters or centimeters. Okay, um, another way of doing it is in terms of a relative heights. So the EM corresponds to line height. So a line height, and I basically just said 0.5 of that. So half a line height, okay. Don't need to worry about what the next thing does, except maybe this, okay? So the color being gray, um, in order for this to work actually, I need to install a package, okay? So I'm gonna come up here to my packages. It's always good to keep your, good practice to keep your packages together so you can see what has been installed. So I'm just gonna type use package, so backslash use package, and I'm gonna type in X color. So that's the package which I wanna use. Notice as well that I'm using American English. LaTeX uses American English, so X color is the American English. So that just allows me to create a dotted line, which is colored gray. Simple as that, okay? So colored, dotted line, colored gray, okay? Um, and yeah, so everything else. So effectively, if you just wanted to pause the screen and copy that into your uh, preamble, then that will give you what you need for next. Okay, so I presume that you've paused the screen, you've got that in your code now. Let's come down here and let's replace our dot fill with, a, with our new command. So remember our new command was dot line. So I'm gonna replace dot fill with dot line. It's expecting two inputs, okay? The first input is actually a parameter. So I'm gonna put it in square brackets and it's actually the width of the line. Okay, so the width of the dotted line. I'm going with two points, okay? I think that's fine, right? The next parameter, is gonna be put into curly brackets. This is now an input. And I actually wanna tell LaTeX how long I want the line to be. So I'm gonna go 35 millimeters, okay? So if I just click recompile, notice what happens. It brings up a dotted line, okay? Which is two pints in width and 35 millimeters in length. Let me just zoom that in, okay? So you can see it's actually uh, grayed out as well. You can see this is black and this is gray, okay? So I think that looks pretty long, uh, pretty nice, and it's in 35 millimeters in, in length. Now, if I want it to be over on the right-hand side, simple way of doing that is just to put it into an environment which tells it on the right-hand side. Way to do that, begin and end flush right. So I'm just gonna go begin flush right, and then also end flush right over here. All right, so begin and end flush right. What it's basically gonna do is move this dotted line over on the right-hand side of the page. So it's gonna flush it on the right-hand side of the page. So here we go, recompile. And you can see that the dotted line appears nicely over here. So I think that looks nice, okay? There's the question, and then there's space, and then there's a dotted line for students to put their answers in, and then it's also got the number of marks underneath that. I think that looks really nice. In fact, let me just get rid of that uh, spacing, uh, which I've kind of put in here. So effectively, this bit of code here in combination with the bit of code in the preamble, that will get you a dotted line which is colored gray to be on this side of the page. Just to show you as an example, let me just zoom in. I can change this dotted line to be whatever color I like. So let's change it to be, for example, red, okay? So if I wanna change this to be a red dotted line, then you can see that's changed to red or if I want it to be blue or something. But I think gray is nice, it's kind of less, less um, kind of conspicuous.